Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History. And we're going back to just last year. This was the year 2020. And uh, this day, February 17th, uh, what happened was that India granted a landmark ruling for women's equal rights in the Indian Army. And uh, this Indian Supreme Court ruled in favor of equal rights in the armed forces they order the government to grant p permission to women to be at par with men regards benefits, ranks, promotions, and pensions, you know, with their male counterpart. And that's irrespective of their years of service, whether they had retired. Female officers had been clamoring for this for so long. And uh, at the time, women were inducted into the army through short service commissions. They were only permitted to serve for 10 to 14 years. And the decision was because the government had told the courts that female officers were not physically and psychologically able to hold permanent commissions in the armed forces. The court had said the government's uh, argument was based on a stereotype and they were discriminatory. But they eventually rejected their plea. Uh, and they overturned that same policy, a 2010 Delhi Co High Court order on that same issue. And the Indian government agreed just last year to give permanent commissions to women, but said it would only apply to women who had served less than 14 years in the army. The courts came down heavily on the government for not acting on this order and for delaying the verdicts by nine years. But as it stands, women in India have equal rights as their male counterparts. I always love conversations about equal rights and equity and, um, you know, um, a better working space and, you know, um, for women generally. Um, always interests me to hear these type of conversations. And um, I think that we should continue to push for things like that here in Nigeria. We should continue to have those conversations. We should throw away some of the stereotypes and the cultures and the beliefs that we have that limit opportunities for women and limit the um, amount of growth that women can receive here in Nigeria. Ngozi Okonjo-Iwela, like we spoke about yesterday, is a great inspiration and it's a reminder to Nigerian men and Nigerians in general that the female child is of great, great value, um, you know, here in Nigeria and across the world. So those people who are stuck with the narrative that if you don't have a male child, you haven't given birth, um, um, should do better. Yes. And, you know, absolutely give more value to the female child. I couldn't yeah. agree more with how it Now, let's talk about a crime of passion. Um, and this, um, uh, sometime, some years ago, I heard of the story of something that happened here in Lagos where a woman was killed by, uh, I think, an ex-lover, ex-husband or so. Um, in the most gruesome, the most brutal way. Um, after investigations, you know, he eventually was, was caught and um, that's the way it ended. But this is another example of what you call a crime of passion, I believe, or just maybe just mental illness. Um, it's a, a story of a guy called Jeffrey McDonald. He was a former U.S. Army physician um, uh, um, early in the 70s. Um, it's a story that happened from the 16th of February in 1970 and eventually uh, played out on the 17th of February 1970. He was on this day convicted in August 1979 of murdering his pregnant wife and two daughters in February 1970. Um, and it says that on the afternoon of February 16th, McDonald took his uh, kids and his um, wife out to play um, on a pony that he bought them for Christmas, returned home th that evening. By the next morning, um, or rather later that night in the morning, um, there was an emergency call that you know, was received by dispatchers. They got there and saw uh, the most gruesome scene that you know, they could imagine. The wife had been stabbed 21 times with an ice pick and 16 times with a knife. His five-year-old daughter was badly beaten. Her skull was fractured twice, and she was stabbed eight to ten times. And then I think the three-year-old daughter was stabbed 33 times with a knife and 15 times with an ice pick. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I, you don't have to I wish how there many were, times. I wish, I wish there was an easier way to say this, but um, I don't want to go too deep into the story, but it was, it was a very, very, very terrible <laughs> scene. He, Jeffrey McDonald, was, of course, uh, found on the floor lying next to his wife, claiming to be in pain and, you know, acting, you know, like um, um, he also had survived the attack, you know, asking, where are my kids? Where's, where are my kids? Oh, these bastards have, you know, hurt my family and stuff like that. He claimed that he also was attacked and was stabbed with a nice pick about 10 times and he was knocked unconscious. He, that, those were his claims. Um, he also claims that he was attacked by three or four men um, who had committed those murders. But over time, with investigations, you know, that had gone on for years, it, it is said that this is 
in America's criminal history, the most liti or one of the most litigated cases. This case continued all the way to almost um, early 2000s. Um, um, and it's still, of course, creating controversy because till day, you know, he still was not able to prove that anybody attacked him. The claims of being stabbed by an ice pick were all, you know, not seen. He had no injuries whatsoever. Um, and um, he eventually was convicted. He was given three life sentences. But in that period, was granted bail a few times, returned to work, was rearrested, um, was sent back to jail, and it's, it's been a total mess. Um, I believe he's still in jail till now. Um, and, but the sad part for me is the fact that we still, until date, he still claims innocence, and we still, or the world still has not been able to find out exactly what led to those murders, or um, mm -hmm. um, if there was anything you know, that triggered his actions that night. Um, it takes some level of rage, some level of passion, some level of insanity to stab your wife and your two daughters in that manner. But the thing is, it still can be proved. I mean, I read about this a bit and I saw there was a list of murders. They said about five, five, five alleged murderers that might be innocent and Jeffrey's case was listed because nothing could be proved. He still claims to be innocent. He still maintains that four people, you know, evaded his house. You know, three men and one woman attacked him, even though yes. he didn't have any injuries. It, it, it could not be proven, right? But this was just so gruesome. I was basically shivering hearing your description of how many times his wife and kids were stabbed. Well, that's, that, that's, that's the thing with the criminal justice system over there, you know. So, you know, guilty until, uh, we're innocent until proven guilty. Um, and since he didn't have, you know, a, a good enough alibi, he didn't have a good enough story, um, his claims of being attacked um, were not very evident. There were no injuries on his body. And it makes no sense, you know, that somehow, some way, you just found yourself slumped and your, your whole family was attacked and, and, and yes. murdered. Um, but at the same time, you know, it still shows how much time it took for the courts and for their criminal justice system to investigate and eventually find him guilty in 1979, nine years after these murders were committed. And 50 um, years later, it's still so intriguing. It's, it, exactly. And in law, it's not necessarily about the truth. It's what, you, what can you prove? What's the evidence? If there's no proof, even if it's glaring to everybody that this person did this, if there's, there's no evidence, you really can't convince. Same way O.J. Simpson got, you know, um, out free, you know, after... Uh, there was, of course, accusations or allegedly killed his, um, you know, his wife then and her lover. Um, um, the prosecution messed up that case and eventually he, he walked. But, you know, a lot of people you believe that he did commit it. But since there's no evidence, there's really not much that you can do. But Jeffrey uh, was given three life sentences and uh, that's where we are. So, yes, Jeffrey McDonald, 1970, a U.S. Army officer, um, um, allegedly murdered his family um, and eventually was convicted in 1979, nine years after. Yes, and the year 2020, a landmark ruling granting women equal rights as their male counterpart in the Indian Army. All right, that's what we have to you uh, for you today, rather. Today in history, February 17th. Stay with us. Our first conversation comes up uh, right after this short break. And now we are talking about the new EFCC chairman, uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa, and the task ahead of him, the controversy, uh, um, you know, leading to his um, appointment and what new... Um, uh, energy needs to be brought into the EFCC by a 40-year-old FBI-trained non-police officer this time. We'll talk next.